I, you put those together, man. I think that's that's kind of brilliant. I like the idea of other sharks exposing themselves by eating that one. I think the 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 next big twist is that they were wrong, as they do hint towards the end of the movie. They were wrong that there were, in fact, only three. Mm. Yeah. That's the because that's the that's the immediate like softball lob that they put in there when they're you know when Carter's got his feet in the water and you know preacher's like are you sure there was only three and he's like ooh and he like pulls out of the water I think what would be interesting is if what they didn't know was that there was a fourth one but it's only a baby oh yes yes Mm -hmm. it's only a baby and the savagery of a baby shark somehow being so advanced you know, because like basically what they did was they had the like child generation kid. exactly, exactly, because nothing was creepier than the Chucky cam, right? When the Chucky cam was coming to get you, that stuff was crazy. So imagine the Shark View Chucky cam getting people. I mean, you're talking this little shark is, you know, people thinking it's cute. You know, all of a sudden, da-na, like it's coming for you. I yeah, oh. make it a baby. Make it a baby. I'd like to apologize for any listener that now has baby shark stuck in their head. <laughs> <laughs> Vengeance is mine. That's I'm simple. Cool. I think I just I don't know. I want I, I don't know. And at the end, it just has to end with with preacher walking into this like mass of them and then saving the day again. Oh, of course, of course. Just have an L I... beat him up. He needs a new. So in this movie, he says, "This is for like you ate my bird," and then he right? says, "This is for Scoggins." They deleted so many of their <laughs> scenes together, man. They had a whole cake bit that they took out. Did they really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. There's a whole yeah, there's a whole subplot about them bickering over cake. It's what it's delightful. Come on, man. <laughs> we needed that. We need to see that camaraderie. It's 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 glorious. So he needs to have what would be okay. So you ate my bird. I I mean right? I, I don't want you he sh, Carter Blake shouldn't die. Like, I agree. Like, he shouldn't die. Maybe Preacher thinks Carter gets killed at some point. Oh. Maybe they get separated. He th- he thinks he sees Carter get killed, so then he does a whole, this is for Carter kind of thing, but then they get reunited at the end. Well, this is for Super Tom. Anyway, this is for Super Tom. That's yeah. what Sam Jackson calls Thomas Jane. You killed my bionic stud muffin. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that uh, Thomas Jane was, in some way, shape, or form, either uh, related to or a direct clone of Christopher Lambert. So I would love to see a uh, preacher make some sort of Highlander reference that is totally weird. You know, there can be only none, you know, <laughs> something so like bad, you know, even like have them have that conversation. Like, you know, you kind of look like the dude from Highlander and Thomas Jane's like, no, I don't shut up. And then after, you know, Carter presumably dies, you know, that's when he's like, there can be only none. And then boom. And then Carter comes back and he's like, Holy crap, you are the Highlander. Like, you're, you're immortal. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Wow. Okay, if Sean Connery comes out of retirement for Deep Blue Seas, I am all over this. Who wins in a fight? <laughs> Connor McLeod or the Headless Horseman? Uh, I think the Headless Horseman has yeah. an advantage. That's <laughs> kind of <laughs> cheating. Connor McLeod's got one group, and that's <laughs> yeah. not going to work. <laughs> He's got one goal here. <laughs> oh, come on. It's already been accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and cuts it off, and he, Waits for the quickening and is just looking around like now what? Uh, no. What do I, what okay. do? I do? <laughs> Alanis Morissette's <laughs> ironic is playing in the background. <laughs> oh my god, I would love that actually. Yeah. All right, and another thing, since this movie is this thing we're talking about right now is so wave heavy, I went through and I pulled some waves from movies, and so. Okay. I'm going to read some waves from movies, and I want you two to kind of pick your favorite from both of them. So there's a movie called The Wave. It's a Norwegian film where a wave from a fjord just destroys an inn. Then we have the interstellar waves, those giant waves. Mm -hmm. The impossible Mm -hmm. waves, that it's the true life tale of the the tsunami that hits and Naomi Watts is in it. Then we have the Poseidon wave. Not the remake, because Kurt Russell dies in it. That movie's stupid. Then we have (laughs) Aquaman, that wave that Orm sends that destroys billions of dollars along the Atlantic coast and kills a ton of baby turtles and wipes, washes off everything back on the land. The abyss wave, the geostorm wave, the San Andreas wave, the 2012 wave, Godzilla, like causing a tsunami on all the people in Hawaii. Ooh, ooh. 
point break when you have uh, Bodhi about to go into that wave, the perfect storm, deep impact, the one that covers the continent, or in the shallows, Blake Lively is on a surfboard and the giant shark attacks her, like coming through the wave. Yes, that's right. So, what, what, what for you guys? What, what would you? Which two are your favorites? Uh, Jay, what are your favorites? I was waiting for you to say Perfect Storm. That's oh, a, I that's did. That's the film I watched. Yeah, no, I know. Oh. You did. It. I was waiting for you. To, it, it took. It, uh, that would have been like wave number one for me. It would have been Perfect Storm. That's like top of my list for not great CGI waves. It was. <laughs> it's decent. <laughs> I remember it's not looking as good as I wanted it to. But that's that's a film that I remember watching a lot growing up. So that's that's high up for me. As is The Impossible. I, I, the Impossible is a film that doesn't get discussed enough. That one, that film hit me hard. It's, it, it's kind of a shame that they whitewashed this Hispanic family into being Hugh McGregor and Naomi Watts. That aside, ignoring that horrible thing they did, it's a, it's an incredible film with an incredible, very realistic wave at the start, which I, I think that is practical as well. I think they just threw a giant wave at the cast. Uh, <laughs> wow. And Tom Holland was in it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, young, young, even baby younger baby. than yeah, yeah. <laughs> baby, yeah, Spider Baby, um, Spider Baby, <laughs> yeah, Spider Baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a good question. I would say for me, Deep Impact is one of my favorite, most tragic looking waves of of all time. The way that they're just watching, you know, the wave come, mm. Taya Leone and her dad. Oh yeah. yeah. It's such a silly showcase, and but it, but what's funny is her dad, um, and I can't think of uh, what the French actor's name is, but I believe in his performance actually. Like the whole like you bury your head and I will watch the income. Don't you worry about it, baby. We are gonna die, but we're gonna die together. I believed him. The wave, not so much. The wave was probably one of the earliest forms of bad CGI of of nature I think uh, recorded ever. But I do like Ma- it. Maximilian Shell was the actor. Thank you, thank you. And then Poseidon Adventure, man, that wave, like it got me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like Gene Hackman and the whole crew. Like I love that movie, actually. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> like isn't Poseidon it? Adventure is it's it's one of those it's, like it's really great ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were I, we were just talking about it the other day. Cause what were we watching? Where somebody gets like turned around. Oh my god, that's gonna bother me, and I can't remember what it was. And wait, and but then they can't get back in time, right? Is that what you're? Am I thinking about the right movie? They do well in Poseidon Adventure. It's the the ship gets flipped upside down, and yeah, so they're trying to wave. get to a certain spot, right? And they're trying to get to a certain spot where they can get out. But there is a part of of timing where the lady who was a diver, she was a swimmer, but she was older, and yeah. you know, like they need her to get through this whole thing at a certain point of time, and she makes it, but has a heart attack. Yes. And yeah, it's oh god, it's such a great movie. It's it's such a great movie. Such a horrible remake. Such a wonderful first one. I know. Kurt Russell dies. <laughs> like, right. how, 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 like like it's terrible. It's trash. Oh. All right, I guess how for me, that my my three, I think my three favorite are just involving surfboards. So I mean, Point Break, watching Bodie stare at that wave and knowing what it means. Right. Just, I mean, that movie, geez Louise. And then I love the one in Shallows, but I did leave one out, and it's the one from Escape from L.A. Where Peter Fonda and Snake Plissken <laughs> surf that surfing? wave, oh. and I sent you that gif earlier too, man. I forgot to write you it down. You did. You totally did. Where Snake high fives Fonda, and then he oh steers his surfboard perfectly to dive onto Steve Buscemi's beautiful convertible. That's right. It, Snake has never surfed before, and surfing <laughs> music is on. I mean, it's the movie. It's played for a laugh, and it's obviously cheeky. And I don't know why. Fonda parked his dune buggy down there because that got wiped out. Like, you can't find too many dune buggies in L.A. It's true. It's true. It's a waste of a perfectly good dune buggy. <laughs> it's Yeah, I just love how Snake high fives Fonda and then steers the surfboard perfectly to... <laughs> oh. I mean, it's magic, man. Snake can do it all. That's the thing. And, all right, and I'm shifting gears here, but... Watching this chopper in this scene, I like these pilots, but it made me think about that movie San Andreas, which also has a wave. Mm -hmm. Because in that movie, so I wrote an article for Cracked about characters who would be arrested. And I remember watching that movie and just thinking, he, okay, so he's a, the Dwayne Johnson is a Los Angeles fire, fire department rescue pilot. And when the big one hits, he takes one of four of the helicopters 
that the Los Angeles Fire Departments and Air Operations have. And he takes off to save two people. He goes rogue. He leaves his job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I get it. He, he saves his family. But this is a guy who he just ducks out. He, he's like, I'm leaving. And with 25% of their rescue helicopters. Right. So a whole crew, like, we're talking a bunch of people might have just left dead because he takes off. And then he leaves that. And then he steals a truck. And then he steals a boat to survive. Uh, like he's just stealing stuff to survive in this movie. But that helicopter got me, man, because... Like, when, when all is said and done, they're like, hey, Ray, uh, what'd you do with our helicopter? And, you know, like, I'm ha- we're happy for you, but, but, uh. It was over there. I don't yeah. know where it is now. <laughs> we're glad you saved your family, but all of, all of ours. Right. We, we just, you we could, just buried them. We just back? came back from the funeral. And... Oh, my God. That's yeah. a, yeah, like, you would have thought, like, maybe he could have taken, you know, a couple of other people with him. You know, what if, what yeah. if he needed more help? What if he needed to fly the helicopter? And still have other people be rescued. But no, 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 no. You just want to go in. You know, he forgot which franchise it was. He Fast and Furious, that one. That's what Yeah, it he's was. all about family. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine that movie. I, I can't help my family. I gotta help. I gotta help the rest of LA. <laughs> Decision I gotta make. <laughs> Unfamily. So, do you reckon <laughs> San Andreas has a higher or lower IMDb score than Deep Blue Sea? Uh, higher. It has... No, I'd say lower. It's higher. It's, what? Yeah. Deep Blue Sea, unforgivably, is 5.9. Whoa. And San Andreas is 6.0. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's disrespect. How do we raise that up? We, uh, Twitter yeah, More reviews. Yep. Twitter Let's campaign. Yeah. San yeah. Andreas has like 80,000 more reviews than Deep Blue Sea. So you we know get... what? Curse you, Dwayne Johnson, and your muscles. Your likability. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's ridiculous. Everyone Absolutely loves him ridiculous. so much. No one just thought about like, hey, this guy took twenty five percent of the Los Angeles's uh, right. helicopters <laughs> and then left it. Like that's the like it'd be one thing if he had it the whole trip. Like he only had it for like a little while and ditched it. That's trash. <sighs> Absolutely trash. Whose fault was it that the winch malfunctioned? No one's fault. However, it does beg the question as to why they didn't fly up as the winch was. <laughs> You know, not working correctly. Why not fly up away from the presumably, you know, malfunctioning infested water? <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or you know, the facility that's now, you know, not quite working right like they needed to because it's potentially being slammed by waves. Why don't you just go ahead and fly up just a little bit? I grant, you know, you're you're flying towards a storm, which is not good, but at least you're not hovering above the the facility. And if things go wrong, i.e., a shark grabs the line and throws you into a building you don't kill not only yourselves but also the upstairs operator who was just minding her own business yeah you know making calls and uh trying to play the jams for everybody i'm and just getting, saying and getting yelled at too they're just saw they're calling her tower and right tower. she hasn't wait well we don't know her surname she could be brenda tower that's true that's true, <laughs> oh, no. that's true. She's no, 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 it's Kearns. Kearns is her last name. It is yeah, Kearns. Right. I do apologize. Kearns is her last yes. name. Yeah, Kearns is her last go. name. Look on the ball she was. Do you think she might have uh, blinded the pilot a little bit with that spotlight? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> if she did, that's the pilot's fault. He should know better than to look for that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that would yeah. that would definitely be his fault. Yeah. Um, and that I did appreciate... going up. Right, yeah. right. I did appreciate the there. multilingual nature mm-hmm. um, by showing that the, you know, the guys that are here to help are Spanish-speaking, you know, individuals. We don't know exactly their uh, citizenship, you know, linings. We don't know where they're from. But I, I did appreciate that the two gentlemen, both of them that were there to help, were Spanish-speaking and did not actually have lines in English. So, wow. I, I'm amazing. glad glad you brought them up, uh, Victor. Because uh, on last week's show, we, we talked about the pilot and the co-pilot a little bit. But this week, we, we actually we meet the last new cast member of Deep Blue Sea, which is the helicopter winch operator. <laughs> uh, so so last week we found out that Valente Rodriguez is the co-pilot he went on to do some other acting he's in Volcano he's currently the uh, vice principal I think on a High School Musical the TV show wow uh, no he's the principal sorry principal wow. Gutierrez and the um the pilot is Daniel Ray who is a guitar player for the Ramones but this this new guy the helicopter winch operator is Brent Rome and he well, he was in Tremors 4. Yes. Uh, he's Juan Padilla in Tremors 4. He's in a couple of episodes of ER. He was in he had a run on the shield for seven episodes. But he stopped acting in 2004. This guy's had a bit of a storied career. 
that I looked into. He he studied religion and anthropology. 